Darktide is an incredibly detailed and immersive game. It is one of the few genuinely good and enjoyable games made under the Warhammer IP and it is clear to those who play it that the developers have a passion for the universe and bringing it to life. From pretty lore accurate weaponry, maps and environments through to immersive and engaging dialogue with unique characters and interactions, Darktide is a rare Warhammer experience that ticks most of the boxes but also leaves ample room for improvement and refinement. As the game has sort of hit an upward trajectory now and fans are re-engaging with the game and the franchise, I thought I would try to support the upward trend and focus on the positive aspects of the game. Some minor things I have noticed that really show the developer's passion and their keen eye for detail. So here are 11 things that you may have missed in Darktide. I would be extremely surprised if you had all completely missed these NPC guardsmen and troopers spread throughout the Darktide maps. Mainly due to the fact that the player characters and our handlers often comment on them and their passive role in the action. So because of this, I thought I would get this one out of the way first. Usually at the start of each mission, you'll run into either a squad of troopers or a couple of scouts, predominantly composed of the loyal Mobian 21st Regiment. They are usually placed in a very noticeable area, often standing with crossed arms or leaning on railings or staring at maps and screens for hours on end gently swaying and not really doing much else. But I'm willing to bet that there are a few of these station troopers that you might have missed. Like this one, and this one, and this one. The next time you deploy into Tertium, keep a keen eye out at the beginning of the mission and you'll realize that there are more assets deployed in the mission sectors than you first thought. At the beginning of the Hab Draco investigation mission in Chasm Terminus, if you make it past the posted sentries and onto the long bridge, stop halfway and look to your left off into the distance. On the far off bridge with the two stationed Lehman Russ battle tanks, a subtle exchange of LAS fire can be seen. It could be the Mobian 21st or a local PDF regiment engaging the traitors in a counteroffensive. Or maybe it is a brave squad of enforcers valiantly holding this line of defense against the traitors. Who knows? There's also a closer example of this Lazfire exchange visible on the new Carnival map. About midway through the mission, have a look towards the vista near the med station and you'll see a similar thing taking place. This kind of detail really adds depth to the environment and offers a glimpse of the broader campaign still raging in Tertium. Such details bring life to the setting and emphasize that loyalists and locals are actively fighting against the forces of chaos. They contribute to a sense of a larger campaign and work to dispel the notion that the war on Atoma is already lost. The prologue of the game does this really well, and working more of it throughout the game's missions would improve the feel of the overall environment, in my opinion. Imagine occasionally bumping into a roaming PDF patrol, or seeing a panicked civilian being chased by a poxwalker down an alleyway, or catching a glimpse of another reject strike team in action off in the distance or across a bridge. Anyway. On to the next one. Similar to the first detail of this video, I am certain that most if not all of you have noticed the variety of permanent corpses that litter the Darktide maps. From the heartbreaking remains of fallen Ogryn, to the depressing fate of Manufactorum workers who were slaughtered 
were executed in the same place they spent most of their lives. The bodies on these maps tell tales of lives lost. There is even this particular worker who met his end with an imperial ration block still in hand, savouring the unique taste of corpse starch until the very end. But have you noticed this meticulously detailed and unique squad of enforcers, their lifeless forms left outside Chasm Terminus, a reminder of the valiant souls who fell while trying to preserve infrastructure as chaos engulfed them. Rest in peace, brave heroes. Recording actual gameplay for this detail was actually really hard, mostly due to the fact that most groaners and poxwalkers get torn apart or atomized within seconds of running into the player's squad. Though I did eventually manage to preserve a few pretty specimens as seen here. Do you notice his clothes? Quite stylish, wouldn't you say? Interestingly, in Throneside, the colour of the fancy attire worn by Groners actually corresponds to their political allegiance, serving as a subtle nod to the deeper lore of the game. Supporters of the out of power House Barquette wear very opulent clothing in golds, blues and purples, while those backing the in power House Margrave don earth tone outfits, mainly shades of red or brown. For more info and theories on the ongoing feud between these two great houses, make sure to check out my other video delving into the dregs of Darktide. Another impressive detail in the game that may happen too fast for most to notice is the suppression mechanic. When firing your ranged weapon or blasting blue fire from your fingertips, a number of enemies will become feared and will actively try to disengage and reposition away from the danger, aka you. Interestingly, the suppression mechanic only works on the less mutated enemies. If you try it on poxwalkers or anything that's really chaosy like that, then you will be sorely disappointed with the results. As you traverse Chasm Station HL 1611 on your way to assassinate one of the numerous and weirdly identical Mobian 6th Arch Heretics, keen eyed observers will find a nice little nod to the early game trailers. A connection to the initial methods of infection used by the Cult of Admonition. The Train. Upon entering the train station, Look over towards the large circular gap in the middle where you'll spot a train suspended with an ominous and fittingly nurgly green light coming from within. This is in fact the very same train featured in the early game trailer. The one that showed its collision within the station where it's releasing green clouds and then it erupts and then it derails. For a closer look, Head around the other side of the room and check it out before heading in to kill the big heretic boy. Remember the four man squad, lost, wounded, half blind with flickering torches down in the bowels of Tertium? The advanced recon team who we saw run into a horde of box walkers and be chased and likely sucked up like noodles by a chaos spawn? Well, it turns out they weren't eaten, or at the very least they made it through the spawn's digestive system quite cleanly, as you can find them hung up like Christmas ornaments from the roof here in front of a big juicy Nurgle shrine in Hav Draco. Not a great way to go, be sure to look up and say hi to them next time you visit the Hab. Have you heard of Plague Bearers? The Cyclopean, single horned, lesser demons of Nurgle, also known as the Maggotkin? They are the diseased and bloated ones who make up the might of Nurgle's legions. 
They are slow, big bellied, and very hard to kill, but they are also the ones who track, monitor, and catalogue the variety of new diseases and plagues created through the powers of Nurgle. Coincidentally, you can find the skull of such a beast here at the final stage of the Refinery Delta Disruption mission in the Hourglass. This little find could have a few different meanings in the lore of Darktide. It could be a hint from the devs on the possible introduction of actual Nurgle demons like the Plague Bearer or Nurgling in future Darktide updates, or it could suggest that these demons are in fact already present on Atoma, overseeing the plague's progression and effectiveness. Or it could simply be an easter egg made by a lone passionate developer he thought we wouldn't notice. I'll leave it up to you to decide. Ah yes, the traitor. The red-headed, war-painted zealot who manages the commissary, who rises through the ranks just like us, and who we frequently bump into throughout the leveling experience from 1 to 30. The very same traitor who we see Rannick shoot in the back after a dramatic escape attempt shortly after her treacherous nature was revealed to the entire inquisitorial retinue. Well, Rannick is either a bad shot, shooting nerf pellets out of his hand cannon, or is an evil soul indeed as it turns out that the bullet did not kill the traitor. Well, not her brain at least. We know this as we can see this zealot running the commissary with no worries at all prior to reaching level 30. But after Rannick, she is transformed into a servitor. Obliged now to continue eternal service to the Emperor of Mankind, whether she wants to or not. Such is the fate of traitors. Did you know that Rannick, the Servitor Maker, and Zola, the suspiciously Nurgle Dagger Immune Explicator, are both visible on the Morningstar? Well they are, and here they are perched atop their nice little bridges and watching us rejects walk around, stand around, spend money on pixels, and engage in deep, meaningful conversations. They will come out and stand there for a bit look around, lean on the railing, look busy, and then turn around to head into another room before doing it all again. Surrounding Mama Hadron, Fat Shark recently included a number, three to be exact, servitors into the vicinity. They are all hard at work, engaged in very critical tasks, scrubbing the floors to impress us rejects and to get the mysterious oil stains up off the otherwise pristine floor of the Morningstar. One is even under guard to make sure he doesn't get up to any trouble or cause any problems. Unfortunately though, it seems the efforts of these servitors are rather futile as the oil stains are stubborn and seem to be there to stay. Alright, that's it so far. I had a few more little details in mind that I would have liked to call out in this video, but they've proven to be a bit hard to capture in game with any clarity, so I thought I might save them for another video if you guys were interested in this sort of stuff. Anyway, thanks for watching. Dystopian Chimp, out. Shh, don't tell anyone. But here's a little bonus for those of you who have stuck around this far in the video. Just before the last arena on the new carnival map, by the wall after the bridge, there's a bell and a smelly green ball hanging on chains. You and your squad can actually have a blast playing with these to make some truly enchanting ding ding noises and to round off your pre-battle ritual. Enjoy.